Welcome, welcome, welcome to Diner Dogs and Catering. My name is Richard. I am the owner, chief dog slinger, and the fat guy featured here. This video is hot dog cart and lemonade stand setup, start to finish. I hope you enjoy, and I appreciate you watching. Hey, let me get started here. Uh, as you see, I'm at a tractor supply company. Uh, this is my main location in 2022. We were here five days a week. We're open six months a year, um, ba basically June through uh, October. Um, we try to start in May if we can, but Idaho weather, uh, wind is my biggest enemy, and uh, there's a lot of wind, a lot of rain, or frequently rains in uh, May, so... Uh, between those two things, it's hard to hard to get too many days. This year, I'm not even going to try to get out in May um, unless we have a, a extremely nice spring. I'm just going to wait until June. Uh, it's uh, I just think we'll have a better start if we just go ahead and and not be overly eager um, and start uh, when the weather permits. So uh, might might miss a couple days, but uh, I think that'll work just fine. And we don't stop until uh, usually the last day. You know, Aka Halloween uh, is our when we usually finish the season. Um, when I'm making this video right now, it is January of 2023. So Happy New Year! Um, right now, as you see, I'm dropping the trailer, uh, reaching in, checking my uh, refrigerator. I have a mechanical refrigerator. Um, checking the, that it's running, and I'm starting pushing the button on my. Uh, water pump for the hand washing sink um, in that door as well as my propane tank um, so right now I'm gonna get get ready to start to unload the canopy um, and uh, you'll just be able to watch and watch what I do as I go through this um, to get ready to start my day here uh, I do get a lot of questions on my canopy. That's a Yermax canopy. Um, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about a couple other things, my cart and some other things, uh, uh, questions I've got from from uh, people interested in diner dogs or interested in what we do or wanting to start a business of their own. Um, but I do get a lot of uh, questions about or frequently get the question about my canopy, where did I get it, uh, who did it and that sort of thing so I'll cover that here real quickly before we get too deep into this video I'll go ahead and cover that so I started diner dogs in 2020 um, as you know we had the pandemic in March uh, my hope was to start uh, right in the spring of 2020 uh, I didn't actually get started until July 4th. That was our official opening date. Actually, at Tractor Supply, uh, it was our first first location and our first day, uh, Independence Day 2020. Um, the delay was obviously supply chain issues and that sort of thing. But I bought all I bought my uh, cart and it came with some of the equipment, including the uh, canopy. Um, I bought it pre-used, uh, so. Um, that saved me a lot of money. I'll talk more about that, but I wanted to focus on the on the canopy. I had ordered the canopy and uh, did not have the top. I I already had. I'm sorry. I already had the the frame and the you know all of that. I had the full canopy with a red top on it, um, the original uh, stock top. Um, it did have a little hole in the top, and uh, I wanted to customize mine anyway, so. I went ahead and designed a uh, a new top for it. Um, Yermax is the company uh, that that made the canopy we use. Um, that's E U R M A X Yermax. Um, and again, I got it used uh, when I bought the cart. He threw that in, and uh, so I went ahead and ordered this custom top. Um, and so that's how I got, got the custom top. I did the artwork myself. I have a little bit of experience with some graphic art. I don't call myself an artist by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, previous experience I, I've done some and was able to put this together. Um, that's my dog, Bailey, that's uh, there. So funny, quick side story. When we um, it was a few days after our opening day, July 4th, 
that the canopy finally arrived and when it did of course i was excited i wanted to see the artwork and and check it out and so i uh was excited and i took it out of the box and i threw it on my living room floor and it was funny because immediately uh, as soon as it was on the floor uh, my dog bailey who's passed on now but um, she was the inspiration for my logo um, sweetest dog i've ever had a little pit bull um, but she immediately just laid right down on it and i couldn't help but think that she like knew she was supposed to be the center of attention or or something i don't know we all project on our pets but but uh, i couldn't help but take that little picture um also on the front of the the video uh the start of this video has that time lapse uh scene now that's a whole different date um than the the day that uh, the video we're going to watch that that was taken on so it was that's a, a time lapse video from the opposite direction from where this video was created um and so you don't really see the the lemonade stand very well but i got the lemonade stand so i'll, I'll let you know that's just a graphic or a mock-up of it but that's um on the left is uh, my little lemonade stand i got that from best of times and you can find bestoftimes.com and uh, check that out if that's something you'd ever be interested in again i did all the the uh, uh the layout of all the artwork on that myself um so i think it turned out really well i do have the stools i have uh, uh four stools is all i have that's little graphic is showing six but um i just usually put a couple of those out uh, during a shift and that way you know if uh, somebody may be elderly or this you know has uh, trouble standing you know they can they can sit down we don't actually use it as a place to serve but we do have a couple of customers that like to like to sit there at the lemonade stand and and uh, have their lunch particularly uh treasure supply employees they they like to use it but most people just stop in get their dog and, and move on but uh anyway that's about the canopy it's a uh, your max e-u-r m-a-x canopy this is the standard version they offer several varieties um they so the pricing uh is a little all over the board um i suggest investing in a good canopy when you're getting started because uh, you can always use it that's one thing whether your business succeeds or not it's something you can always have around and use um so um whether or not to customize it that's up to you um i i don't think it's necess necessary um but uh as time moves forward if that's something you'd like to do uh they also handle custom custom tops so you can you can talk to them and they probably could help you with the design and the artwork as well i uh, chose to do that myself but i believe they can they can do that for you if you need that service so that's a little bit about the canopy so let's move on and uh, check out the video okay let's get back to business here um i do want to mention uh while I do have a more labor intensive setup than most hot dog vendors, um, it's so far been under three minutes. I've already dropped the trailer, leveled it, um, pulled my truck forward, turned on the propane and the water pump, unloaded the canopy, and I've nearly got it erected. So um, when you do this five days a week, you do become pretty fluid with setup and just as well with breaking down at the end of the day. So um, it... Uh, as much as uh, there is to do uh, with practice and uh, uh, doing it as, as many times as I've done it, you do, you know, you don't, you don't waste too many steps, um, you know, once in a while. But for the most part, you just, just go to work. Um, you already know what you need to do and you, and you do it. Um, there happens to be my neighbor going by in that white pickup truck, so I got to say hi to him. But um, I'll just finish unloading the trailer here and... Uh, get my uh i have two garbage cans as you see one i use right by my cart uh that's that i use to uh you know for the stuff you throw away the the bags from the hot dog bun uh bags and just various stuff that you throw away every cook needs a garbage can so i have that one by me and then one out front that the customers use um i was uh gonna mention about my cart uh i did get it pre-owned um interestingly enough though 
Oh, by the way, that's my wife pulling in right now. Um, so she, this is our, th um, this was our third year we, we finished and, um, she's kind of helped me pretty much from the beginning, but not every day. I used to have other people help as well. Uh, but, uh, in 2022, uh, she was with me the whole year. So, um, she no longer works at her, at her job. She just works uh, in the business with me. So that's been a blessing, but, uh, you know, th that also comes with, uh, its own challenges, but, but, uh, it's been, been pretty nice to just have the two of us, uh, be able to, to handle the business. Um, anyway, she just, most everything that, that we take and set up is loaded into the truck. She has a couple of few boxes in the back. Um, uh, about I think two or three boxes, the, mainly the lemonade stuff, um, because she handles most all of that, and I handle more of the food side of things. But uh, anyhow, I was going to mention on that cart. It's kind of interesting. I was all set up to order that exact cart, uh, just about exact. Um, uh, Cater Pro from Ben's Carts. Most people that are interested in becoming vendors know about the different manufacturers. There's the All America and there's Ben's Carts and there's a number of other ones. Um, this is a Ben's Cart Cater Pro and when I was uh, going to start the business, I was getting closer and closer to ordering. Um, I had already decided that the Cater Pro was the right cart for me. Um, and, uh, I was getting real close, but I was at the time I was a member of vendors United, uh, which is the hot dog group, um, ran by Ben's carts. And I had been able to, to make a local friend that was a vendor. Um, and he had used this cart for one season in 2019, not even actually a full season. And he did really well, but he, uh, him and his wife were running it together and they needed the insurance. Uh, and so, uh, they decided they just wouldn't make enough doing it to be able to get, uh, the health insurance that they needed. He had some health issues, so, uh, it was important for them to get, uh, a better insurance than what they could afford, uh, independently. So they, uh, they opted to go ahead and and close the business, which was kind of sad because it was a, a long time dream of his, but at least he got to do it and experience it. And, uh, you know, his loss was my gain, but it was quite amazing that this was the exact card I was going to order. And, uh, you know, after meeting him or connecting with him through vendors United, he, um, just out of the blue contacted me and said, Hey, I'm selling my card if you're interested. And, and, uh, then I found out uh, it was a Cater Pro, and I'm like, I was very interested. Um, saved me a lot of money. I know that's not gonna, that's not something you can um, count on happening for you if you're not started yet. Um, and I don't even think I would recommend this cart for somebody starting out unless, uh, for most people, it's just not the right cart. I, I can just um, share that with you, and I'll, I'll explain why, but I did want to tell you, I did get it pre-owned as well as the canopy, like I had already explained, and right now I'm unloading the, uh, the, uh, lemonade stand, and when I get unloaded, um, Kelly will, uh, get started on getting it set up while I c continue to get the food on and everything else, but, um, on the cart, here's why I recommend maybe an All-American or a, uh, big dog or one of those other carts from uh, from Ben's carts uh, outside of the Cater Pro. Now the Cater Pro is great if that's what you need and that's um, and you're you're ready to afford one. They're a little bit more expensive than uh, than the the big dog. Um, but here's the big difference for somebody that don't really know the differences between some of these carts. If you look at the back of this cart, like between the uh, the tail lights there. That's where you would stand on a big dog cart or an All-American. You, you serve from the back. So the steam table would be set up on this side, on this back side here. Um, and uh, you would stand between it. And a lot of times they'll have a bar or something or handles that you can use or a shelf um, that you can use. But uh, uh, you serve from the back. And why that's an advantage is if you wanted to street vend, in other words, be in your town and pull up and serve right from basically the sidewalk, that's the ideal situation because you stand 
behind the cart. The cart's, you know, uh, pulled up along the sidewalk, and you stand behind the cart and serve from there as people pass by the sidewalk. Um, the problem with the Cater Pro like this one, I serve from the other side. You serve from the side, so, um, so my steam table's on that other side. And by the way, I will um, pick up the, the camera uh, once we get more set up and, and give you a little bit of a better look at what the other side looks like. I apologize for the angle, but uh, we can talk through that. They, the, uh, the difference would be if I'm serving from the side and I'm on, on a sidewalk, you know, I'd either have to stand on the sidewalk or have the, uh, uh, or stand between the sidewalk and the cart. So if any, you know, a car went by and bumped the cart, you know, it could cause injury. Um, or it's just not feasible in most cities. You're not going to be able to set up like this. You want, well, you, you know, you definitely have to use an umbrella instead of a uh, canopy like this if you were street side uh, or street vending, what people call it. Um, so. For street vending, this is not the ideal cart. The Big Dog or the All-American, something like that, where you do serve from the back, those are going to be ideal for the uh, for street vending. So that's the big difference. With me, I never really intended to street vend, um, but there have been a couple of times when it would have benefited me for one reason or another. I couldn't set up at my regular location, uh, or somebody wanted me to do something where, you know, that would have uh would have worked much better to be able to just pull up on this, you know, and uh, vent from the back. I do have a, another cart that I bought for that purpose, but uh, uh, haven't even used it yet. So I'm not sure if I'm actually going to, but it is a consideration um, to be able to, to uh, vent from the back rather than the side. Um, now, if you need more room and you're going to be set up like, like I am in a, in a lot or at a location where you have room all the way around, Cater Pro is a great cart, and one thing I liked about it is it gave me room for the the mechanical fridge, which was one of my uh, bullet or on my bucket list that I wanted uh, or pick list on, that I wanted for the cart I was going to order was the mechanical refrigeration. Um, I wanted the grill on the side there, even though I don't even use it. We'll talk about that, but I wanted the grill, I wanted the mechanical refrigerator, and I wanted a flat top uh, grill as well, uh, griddle. So I have those things on this cart. Um, I was going to mention the barbecue style grill there hanging off the side or the back. I don't even use it, but I'll, but. I would have one of those on any card I had just for the simple fact that if I did an event or did something where I had to do higher production, I would have that ability. The reason I don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis is the way I serve. I use Nathan's and the way I serve, um, they're always grilled. They're raised, they're put in the steam table, raised to temperature, then thrown on the griddle, the flat top griddle and, uh, cooked there with, you know, a little bit of color on them. I also grill the buns. Um, on the what we call we don't say hot dog around my business we just say diner dog so everything we serve is a diner dog or a chili dog or a extra cheesy dog or a carolina dog or a mac and cheesy dog i've got a few items on my menu but but our most typical dog is the diner dog um we don't call it a hot dog that's just kind of a branding thing that we make an effort to to never say hot dog uh it's always diner dog and my customers say it too so while they're saying what they want they're also saying my business name and it just has to do with the with the branding um so anyway we're getting set up i got the cart used like i mentioned already um the this this setup is much more intense than than labor intensive than what most people will be uh uh, doing, I think, getting started, and I'm going to recommend um, start with a, a big dog, something you can serve from the back. So, you know, if you have one location problem, it gives you more options to to still make money that day, still go out and earn. Um, and also keep it simple, um, unless you have somebody that's reliable or an ability to hire somebody um, that that can do lemonade. Don't do lemonade and hot dogs at the same time by yourself. I believe there's probably a couple of people out there that are going to comment and say, oh, I do it and all of that. Well, it's not how I would serve my customers. I don't recommend it. It's too much. If you have 
even two or three customers lined up and you're, you know, you can't really do both at the same time. Um, well, you know, if you serve the dog for them, you know, top it, which I always recommend, don't, you know, don't let them top their own dog, top, you top it for them. It's, it's, uh, it's just part of the service. It's, it's, uh, a way to get to know your customers. There's, a, there's a, about 10 reasons why I would recommend topping it for them rather than letting them top it themselves. Um, but for you to give good service on, on serving them a good hot dog, you can't really do both and, and also be squeezing out lemonade and, and doing fresh squeezed lemonade and dealing with all of that. It's just, it's just too much for one person. Um, if you're doing fresh squeezed now, I'll probably get at least one person that is going to tell me that they do it that way. And that's great. Hey, if it works for you, absolutely. But if you're starting out, I think that's a big mistake. Um, the only way you want to add lemonade from the beginning would be if it's somehow you're it's pre you pre squeeze it uh, pre set it up and and minimize the wait time because you know a hot dog is supposed to be a quick lunch you know people don't want to wait forever um, and that and that's the same with the lemonade uh, you want to expedite as quickly as possible when you get uh, a good lunch crowd going and we do get a pretty good uh, 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 at different times of the day, we do get a pretty good little rush. So you want to be able to expedite pretty quickly. So um, I got to get the get the water for the steam table now. I've got, I serve fresh, uh, I, I, I have chili, homemade chili that we make um, or I make. And it's all beef, no bean. Um, so I've got that. That's pretty intensive to keep up on that because people love it and I go through a lot of it. Um, so I have to make it and then I freeze it in Ziploc bags and uh, that way I can just, you know, pull it out in portions because I have to make large amounts uh, every time I have the time to do that. And working five days a week, uh, there ain't a lot of time left over. Um, you really don't get a day off the whole six months because unless unless weather rains you out or, or a weather-related uh, reason, you I work uh, seven days a week through the summer because those two days off are, are cleaning and, and uh, you know, uh, taking care of maintenance as well as cooking and shopping. So there's just an awful lot to do when you run, uh, as, you know, four, four, 20 hours of being open a week is uh, translates to 70 hours of work a week. Um, and that's week after week. So it's a long summer. Um, but if you love it, uh, it's not a, it don't feel like work. So anyway, the thing I was going to tell you is I'm getting help. I have to help my wife get the, the umbrella on the lemonade stand, but my next step is going to be the uh, getting the food. Now I have the mac and cheese already. It was just made before I pulled in. So within about 20 minutes of me pulling in and, and setting up, the mac and cheese was made. I live uh, two miles from this location. Um, that's something that, that again, uh, I'm in, I, I, I'm very fortunate in the way I can do my business. Not everybody's going to be able to handle doing mac and cheese. I have two other vendor friends here locally. Um, one of them actually tried mac and cheese and, you know, it was good, but it was just too much for, for his setup. He didn't have the conveniences that I have. Um, so, um, it's, I say, keep it simple. Um, the more, the more simple you keep it, the faster it is that you're going to be able to set up, the faster it is you're going to be able to break down, the less tired you're going to be, the less inventory you're going to have to maintain, the less possibility of waste. So there's a lot of reasons to keep it simple. Um, I kind of tend to complicate things and want it a little bit more for for what I was going to do. Um, but uh, I definitely pay for it in the end with the extra labor and uh food care and, and prep and, and time. So um, if it wasn't for having fresh uh, made mac and cheese every day, as well as the homemade chili, uh, just those things alone make a huge difference. And then add fresh squeezed lemonade on top. Those things alone, uh, it just adds a whole lot to this business that you hear talked about in vendor groups and you, you see um, food trailers doing it and different places doing it. 
and by all means if it's what you want to do go for it but keep in mind that the simpler you keep things the better off you're going to be i think i think that's going to be apparent on day one so as you see i'm getting my bucket ready excuse me i'll get my bucket ready get my sanitation water ready i get a wash one sanitation that red bucket on the hub is a sanitation bucket and then there's another bucket that i prep a uh, green one there with uh, just soap it's just detergent for uh that's the one my wife uses mainly for over by the lemonade stand so she can keep things clean and we can just use it for a general wipe down and that sort of thing um she's putting up the, on the barbecue grill she's got our little uh, mascot bailey that's a i had that made by cuddle clones um and uh, you just send a bunch of pictures of your dog to them and they they make it uh paint it and everything else to look like your pet but uh since i lost my dog i was glad i had that made uh, uh a while before uh, we lost her but and then this on this particular day we're also doing pulled pork so we have another little fun thing we have a little pig that we put up on the in the canopy and the the kids uh really get a kick out of our little stuffed animals and st our you know stuffed bailey and our stuffed uh, penelope is what we call the little pig and we just set it up there in the canopy fun little things like that show people your your uh, personality and your sense of humor um little things make a make a difference over the long run you, you you never see any immediate results or anything on that kind of thing but i believe those little it's those little things that make a big difference uh as long as you're consistent do things time and time again and everything is consistent and makes sense to the customer so while my wife she's about getting the um lemonade stand set up i'm getting ready to pull the food out so i got that blue jug there that water is just for the steam table now i don't use that inside any food that's only for the steam table water so you see i just put my pans out there those big pans are called water pans um, so that's what holds the water uh, that steams steams the food and and use you know heats the food um, this water although it is uh, potable or drinkable I don't I, none of that actually goes in contact with the with food except for uh, maybe the steam that's about it I don't do dirty water dogs those are just fine for people that, that want to go that route and if you're keeping it simple that's that's possibly a great way to do it um, I serve Nathan's hot dogs and uh, they're they recommend they don't recommend boiling those at all they recommend doing it the same way they do it uh, which is to steam them up to temperature and then put them on a flat top um, you know and, and roll them on a flat top and get them get them up to color um, so my menu uh, oh I, I mentioned on this particular day I am doing uh, pulled pork so I don't, I don't have that every day I have that a few times a year maybe uh, half a dozen times a year uh, probably less than 10 times a year um and i put them on those big buns you see i just put on top of my bread box the bread box itself is full of buns as well but those buns are uh fresh um baked uh bakery fresh baked the ones on top are a or a uh, bigger bakery or a commercial bakery um and so those are just for the pulled pork that's just uh that's where the street food comes in I, all beef hot dogs are street food favorites um i do pulled pork on occasion i also do smoked meatloaf sandwiches on occasion um i have all that on my uh operation plan so i'm allowed to serve those i know from state to state there's different rules i'm pretty fortunate i was uh, able to get um some things that not everybody not not as not going to be possible for all hot dog vendors so my my menu is a little bit more um uh has a, maybe a couple of more options than what uh, some other hot dog vendors like the mac and cheese not everybody can serve stuff like that on there from a hot dog cart so it depends on what your state is and your uh, health codes are but I, as i mentioned we don't say hot dog we say diner dog so my diner dog is a 10 inch nathan's i serve that on a uh, eight inch bakery fresh bun from a, a local bakery um that whole process again talking about keeping things simple uh 
that is not simple. Having to keep stocked and, and, and order and keep things fresh. Bakery fresh bread doesn't have preservatives in it. So, you know, if it don't get used quickly, then, then it gets thrown out. You can't keep bakery fresh bread for, for very long. Uh, so that's, that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, that your commercially made hot dog buns are ch cheaper and uh, less less possibility of waste. So um, again, just depends on what you're what you're after, how you want to do things. Um, the Nathan's I use a 10 inch Nathan's, which is not a common size. Nathan's makes a 10 inch five to one and a 10 inch six to one. When I was starting out, I tested the the six to one. It was too thin, so I went with the five to one. And if you don't know what that means, that's the ratio of how many hot dogs per pound. So uh, five to one would be five hot dogs per one pound. Or an eight to one is the most typical size, eight hot dogs to a pound. Um, I use a 10 inch Nathan's all beef, five to one hot dog. Um, it's a special order, so they're a pain to get, and there's a lot to that. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend doing something like that. Uh, there's, there's uh, Typically, you can find the... I think they're seven inch or they're the quarter pound Nathan's um, or or other sizes, the five to ones. Uh, but the 10 inch are very difficult to, to get. Uh, you'll probably have to special order them if you wanted anything like that. Another great brand I'd recommend is uh, Hebrew National. Um, I know like on Ben's carts, they just tell you to go with what your local... Um, go to the grocery store see what's getting sold see what what they stock the most of because that's the one they sell the most of and and uh, that's great um, advice um, however for me I went my, my thinking is is Nathan's uh, has won the most taste test across the nation for many many years um, they were the best uh, uh, number one on uh, America's test t kitchen taste test they've been a number one on so many uh, and usually a close second is the Hebrew National so I would go with one of those two if you didn't uh, couldn't f figure out anything else now also people talk about Costco dogs those basically are a Hebrew National um, in fact they used to be Hebrew National and then they got their own uh, they got they got somebody else to make them and but they followed basically the same recipe as I understand it um, so at the end of the day the Costco dog is basically a Hebrew National and nobody ever really complains about those so uh, if you have a Costco in your area um, it's probably not a bad idea to try to use those uh, so those are some options um, but uh, heck uh, if you're back east you know Sabrets is you know if you're in uh, New York or Vienna and Sh Chicago um, it really depends on your region as well as availability but you really don't want to have supply chain issues when it comes to your your main product so get something that's fairly readily available um, like I said for for a variety of reasons I'm able to to get my hands on these 10 inch Nathan's so uh, but that may change who knows so you know you always got to have a backup plan for what would you serve if you couldn't get the one that you uh, typically serve so back to the video I you see I'm putting the water into the steam table and uh, getting all the food on I have the uh, the chili already in the pan and it's already um, been preheated uh, so it'll go into the go into the steam table um, something about food safety nothing that goes on my steam table ever gets served again it all um, gets served or tossed at the end of four hours um, that's your window it's a four hour window um, you don't want anything past four hours without being um, unless it's kept at that proper temperature or um, brought down to temperature in the proper way and and and, and put back in the in the cooler um, you don't but most stuff that goes on a hot dog cart I can't imagine anybody ever putting back on the cart or reusing um, cheese none of that stuff you want to reuse um, if you've uh, had it out uh, you know during a three four hour shift so um, you'll learn all about that this video is mainly about setup and and me visiting with you while you uh, while you uh, check it out but um, that's something to keep in mind is your food safety um, the only thing that I do 
and here's a tip you might like is at the end of the day sometimes I'll have two or three hot dogs left in my pan I'll take those out put them in a bag one of my empty bread sacks and I'll keep them in my refrigerator and I keep those uh, like that and then whenever somebody comes up with a that they have a dog I chop one of those up and give it to their dog that's a good way to win win friends is by giving somebody's dog a, a free hot dog even though it's been on the steam table it's perfectly safe and fine for the for the animal um, and uh, so that's that's just a little tip save those uh, if you have leftovers if you can't eat them or give them away then uh, keep a couple back and, and give them to people's pets and and you know people love their dogs I obviously uh, loved loved mine and people love their dogs so that's a good way to make friends with people by uh, giving their their dog a little treat so just a little tip uh, sorry I'm kind of blabbing on about different things but I wanted to touch base uh, and give you give you what I know um, here pretty soon I'll be picking up the camera and giving you a little more of a tour you see that black box there on the table that's a Cambro those are for keeping food hot um, that one I'm actually using it to keep things cold inside that that uh, and I'll, I'll you'll be able to see it later in the video inside that I have four cool check containers and you can look those up I think they're Carlisle is the company that makes them and they're called cool check um, one-sixth pans these pans are frozen overnight and then the next day we fill them with our toppings put them in there they fit nicely into that box and then with the lid on it when it's not in use we keep the lid on it and you it's amazing I can be out here on a hundred degree day or even hotter and with those cool checks the uh, the condiments stay uh, in the food safety range under 40 41 degrees or below uh, I can I can get done with this shift even on a hundred degree day go home throw that Cambro as long as the lids on it throw it on the table and not empty it until 10 o'clock that night and it'll still be in the proper food uh, proper food temperature so that's uh, pretty cool setup it saves me a lot of hassle um, but it also comes with some hassle because you got to wash them out every day of course the cool check containers and you have to be able to have enough freezer space to freeze them uh, so not everybody if you just have a regular freezer or if your commissary doesn't have a lot of room that's going to be a, an issue for you but um, for me I do have a, a freezer and I actually just uh, keep those in my my freezer at, uh, overnight and it's pretty simple I actually have two sets I have uh, 12 of them so that way I always have a set in the freezer and uh, for the next day so um, that's the only uh, drawback to those is the room they take up in the freezer space because they have to be frozen to work properly and uh, but uh, anyway I get asked about that Cambro quite a bit um, this is a regular Cambro uh, top loading Cambro and uh, I use it instead of keeping things hot I use it to keep my cool checks in and keep them cool throughout the day um, I also have on the top of that box I have my toppings listed on top of there I, I, I want to do something a little different but that is kind of handy because when I flip the lid over and serve the customer they can see the toppings on the they don't have to put their head over top of the, the toppings they can see right on the uh, lid of the, the Cambro what toppings are available or what choices they get um, we have nine toppings not counting the chili because that's a an upgrade we don't we don't offer chili as a topping uh, we offer a chili cheesy dog so you pay up for that but my typical nine toppings are fresh onions grilled onions sweet relish dill pickles sauerkraut coleslaw shredded cheese banana peppers and jalapeno peppers so that's my my uh, nine toppings I also have six dressings and I don't some people they count ketchup and mustard as a as a topping I count those as condiments and a customer can have any of those that they want um, the ones we offer are a yellow mustard spicy brown mustard ketchup mayonnaise barbecue sauce and I use a, a really good good quality barbecue sauce um, I don't people don't request it that often but if they do they really love it um, 
then I also have a, a our own special sauce that we make um, that's very popular so just about everything uh, people that's probably the one we go through the most of is uh, ketchup mustard and our own special sauce <clears throat> you, you know I don't know not every place can have mayonnaise uh, not every uh, state allows that on a hot dog cart but we're fortunate to be able to have that we also do a uh, so we have the 10 inch Nathan's which is the diner dog um, we also have a, a little what we call a puppy dog so that's a, a six inch eight to one Nathan's on bakery fresh bread so it's the same as um, the regular diner dog just smaller and uh, that one only comes with three toppings so that's the puppy dog um, and it's uh, four dollars and we serve a diner dog for six dollars that includes tax we also have a Carolina dog um, for seven and that's a diner dog top with our all beef chili the coleslaw uh, sprinkle of fresh uh, chopped onions and a drizzle of either yellow mustard which is the traditional recipe or our own sauce which is the what we call diner dog style and 80% of our customers if not more want the diner dog style then we have the chili cheesy of course and that's self-explanatory um, our own all beef chili uh, and then shredded cheese some uh, something that we do I'll mention I don't know if you have a chili cheesy dog that, and you're not using uh, uh, like nacho cheese if you're using uh, fresh uh, shredded cheese here's how I do my uh, my chili cheesy I grill the bun of course like I mentioned already grill the dog and then when I put the the uh, when I get ready to to make the dog I put the shredded cheese inside the bun first I don't top it with the cheese I put it I line the bun and I put a generous amount of fine shredded cheese in the bun then I put the dog on top and then I top that with the chili the presentation's nice and it also gives that cheese a little chance to start melting by the time the customer gets it and then we do offer you know uh, some chopped onions on top of that as well and then if they want mustard or anything like that they're they're welcome to it I also have the mac and cheesy dog I serve mac and cheese both as a side and on one of our dogs called the chill uh, the mac and cheesy dog that's also seven dollars um, we uh, do that the same way I fill the bun with the mac and cheese first and then press the the, the hot dog inside that um, and uh, we also I also sprinkle it with what we call diner dust which is just your salt pepper onion uh, garlic mixture uh, that we make up we call it diner dust and uh, people love that that's a pretty popular one is that mac and cheesy I also have an, an extra cheesy if you look at the, on my videos I think there's a video showing me making one of those um, that's where we melt two um, slices of cheddar cheese and uh, put a ribbon of melted cheese uh, on top of the of a regular diner dog um, and then I also just for garnish more, more than any other reason I put a little bit of shredded on top of that just to just to give it that look to where it just really looks really really cheesy and that one's also seven dollars um, and I have what we call a pot belly everybody else calls them Frito pies I think um, or uh, yeah Frito pies the uh, or walking tacos what we do is we have the um, bag of Fritos you see I have the Fritos hanging there on the on the canopy I use two ounces those are two ounce bags um, I use two ounces of uh, Fritos put them in a container I top that with uh, a couple of scoops of chili um, some uh, sh shredded cheese of course diced onions jalapenos I always check make sure they want the jalapenos not everybody likes jalapenos but that's just you know typical walking taco and then most of my customers want a little of our special sauce sprinkled on or drizzled on that as well um, so that's some of our menu items of course I have the chips here's a mistake I made my first season that I want to share with you on my menu my, I have a big uh, printed menu and I put the chips that I was gonna serve I put like if I wanted I had the each one the brand and the, the flavor 
on the board, don't do that. Don't put the flavors on there. Um, you may have an availability issue or, or one reason or another, just put chips and then put the price, whatever you charge. We charge a buck and a quarter, I think. Um, and call it a day. Don't, don't, don't list the actual flavors. Soda we're very consistent with, uh, so we do have the flavors available there on a separate menu but uh, um, overall they'll see if you put a display they'll see what your what kind of sodas you have um, what kind of chips you have you don't really need to list the brands out on or the flavors out on your menu um, because if you have a trouble getting one of them then then there you go you know you you want to always either be committed to always having the ones on your list or just not list them. I recommend not listing the chips because that's what we did our first season. We had the, the chip flavors on the menu and, you know, it was very difficult to keep each one of those uh, in stock. So um, even though we mostly carry them most of the time, if you're out of one, nobody even knows because, you know, it's just not there. So people will choose what you offer them. That's what they'll choose. So don't worry about having, you know, 10 different varieties. For some people, uh, some treats are also a good idea. Uh, cookies, grandma's cookies, uh, Rice Krispie treats, those kind of things. We don't sell much of that stuff. Uh, so, you know, I've tried them. Um, I don't, because of our setup so intense, I don't really mess with them, but I think a smaller setup, it's, it's a good idea to have something else like that. Uh, but uh, if you don't sell them, don't continue to, to uh, carry them. That's would be my advice. Um, anyway, that's a rundown of my menu. Right now I'm getting ready to, to grill up some, some onions. Like I said, I've got the, the, uh, the cart. I got this thing used, but I was going to, um, order this exact cart and I, I wanted to talk about the fridge a little bit. The biggest pain, uh, I bought it used and, and when I bought it, you know, we plugged it in and, and checked, and I could see that the the controls, how the controls on the on the refrigerator worked, and all of that. Got it home, plugged it in. It didn't actually cool, even though the electronics worked. It didn't cool. It had a hole in the condenser. Um, I had it looked at. That cost me a little money to have it looked at, um, and uh, just to be told that it was no good. So I actually had to replace that. And the way they are installed from Ben's carts is horrible. You have to actually skin the top, or in other words, break all the rivets, take all the stainless steel off the top, off the back, um, disassemble the cart practically, just to get the, the refrigerator out and the way it's installed by Ben's carts. Um, when I, when, so before I could even start, that was something I had to do. Um, and it was quite a chore and kind of a mess and it's expensive. So, so, uh, you know, if, if, if you ever got one with a mechanical refrigerator, actually make it, make them bring it down to temperature. And this guy didn't know it was broke. I, I'm, I'm certain of that. He didn't sell me one intentionally dumping it on me. Um, I, I honestly believe that, but, uh, it, that can happen. A little bit of metal shaving from the factory in that condenser can just be there forever and all of a sudden bust loose and, uh, cause a small hole to wear in the, in the, uh, tubing. And, and from that point on, it's pretty much time to replace it. There ain't much else you can do. Uh, so I had to replace it. But when I did, I had, a uh, fabricator build a mount underneath to where if I needed to replace this fridge, it, I'd have to get underneath there, take four bolts out of the feet and lift it out. You know, I'd break a little bit of the, the, uh, uh, sealant that's around it, uh, that, uh, rubber sealant. But other than that, that's about, and four bolts, it would, I could have that fridge out in a half hour. And you, you want to have that ability because you never know when it's going to need maintenance or serviced or replaced. So if I did have to replace it, uh, even if I had to buy another new one, uh, I wouldn't be tied up for a week or two messing with anything. It's just take out, put a new one in, reseal it and be done with it. But, but, uh, and uh, there are benefits to not having the mechanical fridge. Notice how far that sticks out of the, the cart. 
because of that, I can I have to have a smaller bread box. Even though I have a larger cart than a lot of guys, the the bread box is smaller than like on a big dog cart or on an all American because of how much room the fridge takes up. With a cooler that's that's mounted underneath, you don't have anything sticking up through the cart, just the lid. So uh, the cart you can, that that affords you more room for the uh, for the uh, bread box. Um, not a critical difference, but it is a difference. Um, the uh, so I'm getting ready to park my truck. You can see we're pretty much set up now. Keep in mind that's two people doing all of this, and basically you're looking at just a, almost you know almost a full hour it took us to to do this setup. Um, so on top of uh, the four hours we're going to be open, we're usually open 11 to 3. On top of those four hours, there's that hour set up. They don't count any of the work it took to load the truck and and prep the food and all of that just to get there. I usually wake up at 6.30 in the morning um, and actually have to be loading my truck by 7.30 to stay on my schedule to be open by 11. So, you know, the day starts early. Once we're done at the end of the day, uh, it takes us probably 45 minutes maybe to get everything packed up and the trailer rehooked, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And then all of, you know, our cold checks have to be cleaned and dumped out and restocked and all of that. The, uh, the fridge, things have to be put away, restocked. It's, uh, it gets pretty labor intense. So I'll go back to what I said earlier, which is keep it simple. Um, the simpler you keep it, simpler you keep your menu, the less possibility of waste, the, the, the less time you have invested. Um, it's worth it to us. We do make a uh, pretty good income when we're open. Um, and, 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 I like food and I'm kind of a, of a, uh, foodie guy. Um, I enjoy cooking. I've cooked before, even though I've been in other professions, you know, I grew up in restaurants and, and cooking and, and as you can see by, uh, my size, I love to eat even probably even more. So, um, I, uh, I enjoy the extras that we do with the mac and cheese and everything else, but, uh, uh, keep it simple. That That is going to be probably the underlying advice I can give you. Um, I wanted to share this video with you to give you an idea um, and talk through some of the different things. Hopefully, you know, I'm basically just doing this uh, uh, to, to give you an example of, of how Diner Dogs does it. Um, one thing when I was getting started, not a lot of, uh, not a lot videos I found was actual work. They were more just discussions or, um, uh, you know, Fenders United groups and hot dog groups on Facebook and, and that sort of thing. And you didn't see, you know, the, the, there's much fewer video, uh, videos available of the actual work of vending, food vending. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Those are the ones I enjoyed finding when I was uh, getting ready to start my business. Um, I know on the Hot Dog Cart YouTube channel or Ben's Cart's YouTube channel, there, if you look up, uh, search for Frankenstein's, uh, that's one that I really enjoyed watching before I started because I could see a vendor actually working. I think there's a couple of other ones on there. Most of them aren't, um, vending. Most of those are informational and they're all useful, but, um, it's nice to be able to see somebody actually, uh, doing the work of, of, uh, the day in and day out type of work and it all starts with getting set up so that's why I wanted to share this one with you I've got another video coming down the road that will be uh, just uh, that we'll talk through that's actually us at an event um, I think it was the trunk or treat event we had so it would have been in October um, but I do have some videos stored away somewhere of that that I'll bring out and that'll probably be one of my next videos um, but uh, uh, I think that's why I wanted to share this one is, is just to just, just, uh, give you a chance to get to know, you know, my business and what, how we're doing things. And then of course you'll, uh, you'll do it your way and that's the way you need to do it. You know, what's going to suit you when you listen to all these, uh, 
uh, different vendors giving advice. It's just like going to the grocery store. You don't take all of it. You take what you can use, and then you just leave the rest. So here I'm giving you a little bit of a of a look of what we look like when we're all set up. We're pretty much completely set up, and and uh, the food's coming up to temperature. Kelly's over there getting her lemonade stuff set up, um, so she'll be able to do the fresh squeezed lemonade. Uh, so, like I said, there's my Bailey. My uh, cuddle clone, they call those. That's how I had that made. I have my swooper flags out. I, I have one for the lemonade and one for the hot dogs. I had those custom made. Um, before I had those made, though, I had some regular pre-printed pre, pre uh, hot dog flags. You need something out there. You need something to draw attention to yourself. So we're going to do that menu. There's our old menu. We're going to do a little different um the, our menu this next year and we're going to uh, actually hang a couple of more signs off of our canopy that worked really well um, but these are just mental notes that I'm saying out loud that I plan on doing so that's what it looks like from the back of the hot dog or the uh, lemonade stand and she has her flavors you know our first two years we didn't even offer flavors we only offered flavors this last year i believe i don't remember us doing it in 2021 if we did it was at the end of the year we always have our ice you know we have this cooler with a few pops in it and that's just for her to be able to reach in and grab those and keep those cold but we also have another cooler that we restock that one with there's the cambro i discussed with the cool check containers um one six size containers with my toppings that's six of the toppings on top of that i have the shredded cheese and the uh, sauerkraut and the grilled onions so that's where i get the nine i always offer little, little lemon heads it kind of goes with our theme so those are obviously complimentary um showing our showing our uh i don't have the audio to this video on so i'm showing the uh Bailey and uh, trying to just give you a, a little bit of an idea of what it looks like from from the cook side there's the Nathan's all beef plus the smaller ones what we call puppy dogs so we have the the diner dog and then the puppy dog there's our pulled pork which like I said we do probably 10 times at most a year but that is slow smoked uh, all uh, pulled pork <coughs> I apologize. There's my mac and cheese. And my all beef chili. And I, I do that. I, I, I don't even use chili powder in that. I make my own using ancho chilies. Uh, so I break down my own chilies, make my own chili powder. There's my cold or my uh, sauerkraut. So yeah, there's my setup. My flags. Hope you enjoy and I uh, hope you'll uh, come back and check us out next time. Have a wonderful day.